Thank you all for joining in, and this is episode number three, uh, weekend learning from how to manage devices community, right? So last weekend we learned how to set up a server in Azure and how to kind of build a domain, right? Active Directory domain and how to join SSEM server into that domain. And we were kind of checking out how to resolve the name resolution issues, DNS related issues, right? That is where we stopped last time, right? So let's let's go into that details today and we'll try to build some SQL and other stuff today. Okay, so before that, let's let's get into some of the details of how to manage devices community, right? So this is our um, contributors, right? And uh, we have talked about them um, every every weekend. Um, so if you want to have more details, please go over here and check out. So I'm go not going to spend a lot of time in explaining all these, right? So if you have any questions related to device management, please feel free to use this forum. We try to answer your questions, right? And we try to replay your doubts, right? So please, you feel free to join this forum and ask your questions related to device management, right? Okay, so this is this week's um, numbers, right? So, and we started getting some badges out, right? So something like expert, beginners, and professional, right? Based on the point system, right? So it is, it is good to have these badges and some recognition in the community, wider community, right? And I would be sharing all these across my social media handles, right? So probably that will help you to get some visibility, right? Okay, so these are the these are the stats of week week six, right? So just wanted to show you that before we get into this. So in the first episode, we have shown how to take the subscription, trial subscription, and what are the credit available for you. And we built all these things just to give you a recap, right? We built resource group, we built virtual network, we built um, subnet, right? And domain controller, we are going to build SQL and SSEM. Today, we built DNS solution and everything, right? So. Let's go into the lab and let me share my screen. Okay, so let me close this down, right? And let me share the screen. Give me a sec. Okay, hope you can see my screen. Okay, so this is this is our SSCM server, right? So this is our SSCM server, and when when we try to ping the domain controller from this SSCM server last time, it was giving us some different FQDN. That was the default FQDN of Azure, right? So I told I told like probably we might need to check into it. We might need to we might need to see what is happening over there, right? So what I did is I did two changes in, in cpa.cpl that is to bring up the network. Um, so I did two changes over here. One is basically, I don't remember whether it was a default, um, it was set to the default automatic one over here or not. Uh, when I when I stop the mission and uh, bring this server back today, I uh, saw so I think yesterday no today today morning right. So it was it was set to automatically obtain. I kept that way and this was also set to automatically obtain. And 
it was not pinging uh, the server with this FQDN, right? So what I did is I manually entered our local DNS server IP and the Azure DNS IP, right? Azure DNS is to get the internet connection on the device, right? Okay, so that is the one change I did. And the other change which I did is basically I did fire up firewall.cpl that is opening up the firewall for firewall configurations on the machine, right? So this is the one, right? So over here on the defender, like the defender firewall was turned on, I think. It, I turned off this and this these two things were already off, right? So I turned off this and that enabled the ping and all the other uh, issues that that help to resolve all those ping issues and FQDN related issues, right? So I can do the same thing from the S, uh, domain controller server as well. This is our DZ, right? So I was I was trying to ping this and the ping was not happening after disabling that after disabling that. Um, firewall thing right it it started pinging right so we are good uh, with the domain controller and uh, SCM server connectivity right so we need to make sure our DNS and everything is working fine before before installing SCM server right otherwise you can get into a lot of trouble later right so I'm not using host file or something over here, right? Um, I'm not at all using host file. Host file is kind of uh, problematic sometimes, right? If you use the host file to uh, bring up the resolution, right? Okay, so let's let's get into the business now, right? Now let's uh, next point is we need to install SQL, right? We need to install SQL. To install SQL, we need to enable .NET on the on the server, right? So we are going to install the SQL on SCM server. So we need to enable .NET 3.5, I think, right? So I'm going to go through the standard thing over here, right? I'm going to select the feature .NET 3.5 feature over here and click on next and don't miss this one, right? So this is this is I don't I don't know. This is not very user friendly for me at least. Uh, these new server OS thing, right? Um, you need to provide source file of the OS to get this 3.5 installed, right? So that is why it says, oh, okay, alternate source path you need to provide. Uh, do you want to provide that? Okay, over, over here, this is the option to provide the alternate source path. So if this is a 2019 mission, right? 2019 server, this is uh, server 2019. So I need to download the server 2019 and I need to provide the path of that particular folder. This is the folder path which is required, right? So this is basically server 19 OS uh, ISO. I, ext I extracted it. I downloaded it, extracted it from the eval sender. And this is the path which we need to provide to install the .NET Framework 3.5. Otherwise, it will fail, right? If you don't provide this path, alternate source path, then it this installation won't work, okay? So I'm going to provide that, right? And I'm going to say click install, right? And it is going to get installed, right? So once it is installed, probably we can start install start the installation of the SQL server, right? So let's let's wait for the installation to complete, right? And in today's um, episode, I am I, I don't know. Like I was thinking about it, what we can do while we wait for the installation, right? For example, uh, the 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 feature installation like this is going to take some time, and uh, the SQL installation is going to take some time, right? What what we will do during that time? 
right i was thinking about it and uh, i thought probably we will utilize this time to explain something already there in sscm i have a different sscm lab and probably we can show we can go through something in that sscm lab to uh, while this server is doing the stuff automatically right in the background right so uh, i don't think this is going to take so much of time but the sql installation and the other stuff is are going to take some time right so that is why i kind of made uh, this ready right so this is this is my uh, the other sscm lab infrastructure or lab server uh, in azure so i already have one in azure this has a different sql server the remote sql server and it has some client machines uh, as you can see right okay so let's go back and see what is happening over here okay so this is this is the latest version of sscm and we are going to install the same version actually right so this is this has two kbs this is two 20s you are not speaking can you go on mute please thank you I lost where we were. Okay. Anyways, hope you are okay. So this is 20.02 latest production version, and uh, these are the two updates or KB articles or hot fixes available, and I already installed these. Right. So first of all, let's go through the features and uh, which are the pre-release features and release features right so i don't know how many of you know what is the difference between pre-release features and release features right so pre-release features are basically these both both these features are fully supported in production right so if for example microsoft is supporting this feature to use in production we do like if, if you can raise a support case with microsoft for pre-release features as well right but why there is a tag called pre-release because these things these features are not completely developed so microsoft is developing these features okay and they are doing a lot of coding and trying to improve and enrich these features that is why it is called pre release so there could be lot more changes coming into these these four features for example right in the future releases of uh, configuration manager or sscm right so so that is the difference between release features and pre-release features right let's go back over here right and this is finished okay i'm i'm going back to the don't get confused right i'm going back to the the new lab which we are trying to set up so this is the this is the lab um, where we tr we try to install dotnet framework 3.5 right and we provided the alternate source uh, source file and etc etc and the installation got succeeded right okay now let's close this right and let's let's close this also right and let's go back to our source folder in the c drive now let's try to install the sql right so what i did is basically i downloaded the sql reporting service as well as uh, ssms right that is management studio right so i don't know how many of you have seen uh, this blog from rajul he has he has done a excellent job right to write down end to end sql installation right sql installation uh, steps for for sscm right so he has done it up to the mark that you can install like everything from the production perspective because he has mentioned everything like what is the what is the database database sizing required and like file allocation size required right all these details are there in his 
it's his post and temp db best practices right everything is there right so you can close your eyes and follow this post from him right to install new sscm db if at all you are installing it in the production production environment right memory configurations everything is there even even antivirus exclusions right those things are mentioned by him right so let's let's go through that uh, after the after the start of the installation process right so this is the iso uh, which i downloaded from the eval sender right and i'm going to mount this iso right and i'm going to run the setup right this is sql 2016 right so let's try to install that right okay let it it is getting launched now All right and i'm going to installation right and this is the this is the installation which i'm going to go through now right so new server standalone right and uh, the, the the this is the standalone server which we are going to install right so standalone server right and it's getting started i'm going to do the eval one right and if you have a if you have a key then you can put in the key over there right so we are doing everything eval in this lab right so accept right so this is straightforward thing and it will check over here and use microsoft update no i don't want that right this is where it will check normally for the dot net if i'm not wrong right and it will say like probably you need to have that in place okay so this is this is important right so which are the things you need to Uh, you need to enable here right so if you look at rejul's blog post you can see this is 2017 and we are installing 2016 because of the reason which i which i told you last time there was some con configuration specific configuration required for 2019 and all right so over here he mentioned that data base engine service right and client tool connectivity these are the two features which we need to select one is database engine service and the client tool connectivity right so we can just go through that right database engine service and client tool connectivity right so let's find out client tool connectivity over here right and you will think about like what about reporting service right so reporting service yes we can install in this because this is 2016 version of sscm no, sorry sql right but from 2017 version right 2017 sql 2017 see he has mentioned from 2017 reporting service moved out of sql setup right so anyways i am not going to install c reporting service now right i'm going to go with only these two right database engine and and client tool these are the required component for the sscm setup right why you will ask why i'm not installing the sql management studio right so probably i will try to install this later right during here he mentioned that probably sql management studio installation from a different source right so we will try that right after installing and restarting this one right so we are going ahead with client client tool connectivity right and and what else database these are the two where is it database engine service client tool connectivity right so we are going ahead with that those two configurations and one thing we need to note here is we need to change the 
source path over here right so uh, as as i mentioned last time we have changed our we have a different drive for installing all the sql and sql and all the other stuff right so that that drive is f drive right so what i normally do is i normally change this drive letter right so i don't know how many how others are kind of doing when uh, when they create a uh, lab scm environment right so i i will keep the folder structure same and just change the drive letter right so that like we will we will we will be able to track this and we will we won't change anything specific to the folder structure right so i only selected two and i'm going to go ahead with the installation now right so let's see and on the next page probably i need to provide the username and password and everything right let let me confirm uh, which is the user i'm logged into right so this is my domain user right that that is my domain user with admin access so that just fine right so okay i'm going to see next i'm going to use the default instance i'm not going to create any special instance for scm right so and you can you can you can see the agent username and password account name and password right so probably if you want you can change it right i normally change it uh, to um, basically my uh, my username who whoever inst installing this but the recommendation is to use a service account right so recommendation is to use a service account rather than the username so i think he mentioned it somewhere here right so recommendation is to use service account right service account this is what he mentioned somewhere here right service account details right so this is this is what i normally do in the production environment right and you need to have that spn and all right for for this but today for for this lab i'm not going to do that i'm going to use the same account right which i use for for logging in and installing the installing the SCM and SQL, right? So I'm struggling to speak and type at the same time. Hey, Anu, quick question here. Uh, we, uh, so usually when we use service account, you know, you mentioned about SPN, right? What does SPN actually does? So that I don't know exactly to be honest. What what does the X SPN logic be uh, lo the exact logic behind it? It's basically a service principle name, right? So service principle name provides easy access uh, to the resources through uh, through uh, very uh, I don't know like um, I don't know how to explain it, but SPN is the uh, safest method to access the resources remotely, right? That is what my understanding is. But to be honest, I'm I'm not very sure like um, what it does in the background, right? We need to we need to kind of we need to kind of um, ed edit some attributes in the Active Directory, right? That will ensure that the only appropriate resources will have the access, right? So that is the logic behind it. But if you if you ask me, what is the exact uh, details of SPN, SPN and how it works in the background i'm i'm sorry i i don't have that much details no worries thank you i appreciate that okay okay so anybody wants to comment on that or yeah that was uh, yes sir this is deepak yeah so deepak that's a, that's a unique identifier of the uh, service instance actually which we are using you already covered that part and it's a uh, corporate which is uh, associated with a service instance 
with a service login account. So this will allow the client application to request that the service authentication and the account even if the client does not have the account name. That is why we use actually SPM. Thank you. Oh, that's great information, Deepak. Thank you. Okay, so let's let's go ahead. SQL Server browser. This is anyways disabled, so I'm not going to do anything. And the collation, right? So that is also important, right? So collation uh, value is important. I have seen like many issues because I forgot to change the collation before. Like uh, do, during the SQL installation, right? I I forgot to change the collation and it it had given me a lot of trouble and we need to like i need i i had to go through go through the installation again and uh, repair again and kind of stuff like that right so if you ask me what is what is the exact um, why why do we need this collation to be honest i don't know right <laughs> uh, i don't know deepak you know about this if you can explain that would be great if you if you are okay with that <laughs> No, sir, I'm not familiar with this one. OK, fine. <laughs> yeah, even I don't know like what, what what is the exact meaning of uh, collation and why do we use it? Um, prob this is something related to SQL uh, technology, right? So I'm not I'm not very familiar with SQL. I'm and I don't want to say something stupid. <laughs> OK, so do you know what is the collation for the SQL? This is the collation, right? So SQL Latin, Latin one general CP one CI AS. I always wonder what does this actually. I, <laughs> from the starting, I use this uh, this collation detail. So let me find out that Latin SP one CI AS. That the one. Let me confirm that. Normally, let me open up Notepad. Because I don't want to. OK. So. SQL Latin one general CPI CIAS. I hope this is the one, right? It says case sensitive ascent. I don't know what this is, right? <laughs> Anyways, Latin, let me confirm once again. Like this is what happened with some of the Intune training also, right? I was I was confirming something and uh, even after confirming it, I did some mistake. Like I missed some uh, some part of the uh, uh, OMA URI, so that caused some uh, some issues with our testing, right? Okay, so Latin one, Latin one general CP CPI CP one, right? CI AS. Okay, I think that's fine. CPI CP one CI AS. Okay, next. Okay, so these are the two important things which we need to remember, right? And over here also, like I normally, if you if if I do it in lab, I normally provide the login username and password, so that will help. Probably, it's better to you go through the go through the documentation over here and uh, change accordingly, right? SQL service account, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, right? For the production installation, so that is the best practice, right? Okay. So let's click next. If you want to change, check the data directory and all, you can do that, right? And uh, confirm whether you are installing it on the same drive or not. Temp drive, as he mentioned, probably you can change uh, the um, temp drive to a different drive rather than using the same drive as the database. That will improve the performance, etc. Right, all those details are available in uh, Rajul's uh, blog post. Right, right, all these details are available. I'm not going to change anything. I'm going to go with the default one. Right, click on next. Now it is is going to install it. 
so this is going to take some time so we started around 101 and basically i didn't change the timing i don't know why it is coming as utc okay anyways okay so this is this is going to take some time i don't know how much time it is going to take let's let's wait wait and see right so going back by while we wait for that i'm going back to the the other lab where we can we can do something we can do some explanation or we can go through something right so i don't know how many of you have seen um maybe co-management right this is the co-management slide configuration and uh, tenant attach uh, i don't know how many of you know what is tenant attach right so so this is tenant onboarding to basically um intune or microsoft endpoint um endpoint portal right so so this is this is that configuration we have different blog posts available for that right you need to sign in with your um, azure credentials right with uh, probably if you have uh, the intune license and all right we need to use that that credentials username and password to sign in and then you can configure like to upload all your uh, device details right all all my devices managed by SCM or configuration manager uh, to to intune portal or microsoft endpoint portal right so endpoint manager portal right in the cloud and then from that point onwards you would be able to manage all all these clients right from uh, the management portal endpoint.microsoft.com portal right so this is again the enrollment of co-management and co-management workloads right so you can slide the slide slides here workload slides here right if you want to for example if you want to um, manage your workload like antivirus workload endpoint protection workloads to Intune, right? So Intune will be managing those policies. SCM policies won't take effect, right? So those kind of things you can do over here, right? And staging, uh, staging you can, if you are doing a pilot, right? If you, for example, if you are doing a pilot stuff, you can do a staging browse, uh, staging, and you can select a pilot collection. So that will impact only for the pilot collection, pilot collect devices in that pilot collection so so that is very helpful right okay so let's go back and see what happened over here okay it's still going on right somebody somebody scared me okay so let's where is it okay so what is what is the other thing which we can see azure services that is that is a kind of discovery i don't know how many of you are seeing like there are i have shown this many times before also azure active directory user discovery group discovery right so you can configure all these things from here right uh, configure configure azure services and you can go through all those things so from here right if you want to do a cloud management you can you can enter those details and uh, go through it right so we will see all these things uh, with that lab also probably right if if it allows us to configure right so i don't want to uh, show all those thunders right but i just wanted to give you an overview right of the console right so what is what is there over here right tenant id all those details are here that is that is once you activate uh, enable the user user discovery and um, group discovery right all these will be available in the tenant details right so these are the uh, other other kind of service principle uh, azure service principle applications which provides sccm access to the azure right so these are those those applications right there are client applications as well as uh, there are there are server applications right okay 
so cloud management point cloud gateway so cmg is hot topic nowadays right so we can configure the cmg if you want from here right so these are the general stuff which we can go through and uh, this is the server configuration and basically configuration software distribution point so so i don't know how many of you seen this these are the threads uh, maximum threads available for concurrent connect, uh, distribution settings right maximum number of packages which you can deploy these are the default settings i don't recommend to change this in the production environment but if you have if you want to test something probably you can do it in the pre prod environment and test it right i don't know how many of you have gone through this already right so this is a uh, network access account probably we can use it for uh, something like osd scenarios some osd scenarios as well as for client push uh, scenarios right um, so these are the things you can configure in in this config configured side components right so one uh, one important thing is software update point right software update point is the place where we select the classification products right and if you want to enable the third party updates right so third party software updates right uh, the drivers and all the other linover drivers dell drivers right and all those th things you can do it from here right enable that from here right and wsus maintenance that is very much important right in the production environment so these are the configurations which we can go through later but i just wanted to show you right and as i mentioned last time sites there are site servers and site system servers right site system servers are basically remote dps and remote mps right and there are primary secondary servers also secondary servers are site servers right and dp mp it's up those things are like site system servers right okay i think i explained that last week okay let me go back and see what is happening okay so this is again we are again we are coming back to the new lab setup which we done uh, and we can see the sql sql is okay now and it says something product update is successfully to 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 okay fine and i'm going to close this and i'm going to close this also right and now there are two things pending over here right regul mentioned that i normally install sql management studio also as part of the sql installation but this time i didn't follow that right i didn't install that right so what rajul mentioned is uh, reboot the server right after the sql installation and then you can download and install the sql management studio right so i'm going to do that right so let me let me copy this this urls into my where is where is the uh, where is a uh, where is this cheat file okay so this is one url which i want to refer and the yeah okay before we start let me show you this is from where i downloaded the sql reporting service right sql server 2017 reporting service this is probably not applicable for our scenario but anyways we are going to try it later not now right we are going to install 2017 and check right on the 2016 probably it might not work okay and this is where i installed the management studio piece right so uh, we will try to install this also right so let me copy this also into into this and this is the come on go away this is the another url which which i normally use when we when i install a primary server right so that i don't miss anything save it 
why i don't know why it's showing has to save me again okay okay let me save it in another name right everyone okay so let's let's restart the server after the installation shut down minus r minus f minus t access denied wow that's that's interesting so it's that is again admin right probably i need to i need to launch that from admin okay let's restart okay that's fine going to restart it and okay this is the this is the old lab which we are talking about so site servers and site systems so this is also important right client settings right so i heard like many people saying like probably it's not not good to edit the default client settings right it's better to create a custom client policy and edit those and deploy that rather than playing around with the default one right so i don't know how many of you do that when when i mentioned this uh, in one of the user group events somebody told me like probably there are some settings which is which are only available in default client settings right yeah in that case probably for that settings we might need to use the same uh, the default client settings otherwise it's it's better to use uh, create a new one and use that right okay so that was client setting so security is basically uh, all about our back and uh, new console connections all, and all, all all those things right so basically i don't know how many of you played around console collection uh, sorry console connections right so you can see all the console connections available in this server etc etc right so i i have a post related to this what is console connection and all uh, so probably you can go into that to get more details so let me connect back to the sorry for shifting here from here and there right so i'm going back to the sscm server which we are building now right we have installed sql right and we are going to see we are going to trying to install sql management studio now right okay so this is installed this is back server is back now let's let's see what are the components got installed over here right sql 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 configuration manager right sql installation center installation center right nothing much over here 2016 you can see these are the components got installed right and now i have already kind of downloaded let me open this up i already count kind of downloaded the sql management studio bit in the so and kept it in the source file right so this is the sql management studio right let's double click and install it right it's going to take time i don't know why let me check task manager and see what is happening over there okay cpu 8 percentage right and the memory 10 percentage so we are fine in that perspective not going to install this in c drive so i'm going to go with f drive right so that is our drive and click install so this installation is going to get us our console sql console right similar to sscm console right so it is installing something overall process is going on okay so overall process sql native client right so that is also getting installed 
okay let's let's go back to our server right the the old lab and see the things over here right the so the, these are all the things related to rbac okay so if you are not familiar with rbac that is role based access um rbac role based access control right so that is that is rbac in ssem so ssem rbac is much more powerful right if you compare it with intune but i you, as you know intune is coming with um, some coming with lot of rbac options recently and uh, it is it is giving giving the same kind probably in the future it will give the same kind of uh, power in rbac uh, right similar to similar to ssem or configuration manager right you can create custom rbac policies and you can copy these policies and uh, create uh, new policies with this template right so these are the very useful things we have lot of blog posts about rbac also right and security scopes are also good uh, good stuff right this is this is this allows you to see and hide um, hide some uh, collections or not collections basically objects right uh, scopable objects from ssem so there are scopable objects in ssem like if you uh, for example if you go to if you go to library software library and see software uh, let me go to applications right applications and see seven uh, zip right so if you see some security scopes over here right that means this is a scopable object right so scopable object then you can scope it right you can say okay i want only like indian admins to see this right i don't want uh, us admins to see this particular application so you can scope it to indian admins and uh, that would that would work really well right so that is the scope thing right let me go back to scope and let me go back to the installation and it says restart is required in order to complete the setup okay again here restart let's restart right and let's go back okay so accounts accounts are like admin admin accounts basically uh, that is that is going to Uh, give you admin accounts are here basically these are the admin accounts in the in the in the lab at the moment right and migration yeah <laughs> i don't know how many of you did the migration jobs uh, this is not yeah i i i tried this couple of times with with uh, kias and all kias and primary servers this is bit complex right this is not this is not easy easy task if you have a complex environment right? like kias and primary servers and all right so yeah you need to be very careful when you run the migration task and all and if you have a migration task probably you might not be able to upgrade the latest to the latest ssem version right so those are the things which you need to take care and management insights are very useful to get an overview of your entire infrastructure right uh, from a security perspective and from a client perspective and from a collection perspective etc etc right so if you go to collections you would be able to see like a default default rules available right collections with no query rules and enabled for any schedule right this is stupid right why do we need a collection uh, with no query but the collection sh is scheduled to update every like two days or three days why do we need that kind of a thing right you should not you should not like if you have if you don't have a query or something probably it's better to avoid the update schedule also remove the update schedule also right that will reduce the um in like uh, what do you call that will reduce the performance impact on your server right so if you for example if you have 100 or 
thousand collections for example and they don't have uh, like probably 20 of them doesn't have um any any query in it and the schedule is enabled right uh, for update uh, automatic update every like every two hours or three hours right or probably a day then that is going to impact the performance of the server right ideally in the background even if sscm is not doing anything it will update the collection and check whether there is any update uh, or any any query updates or something like that Okay, so that is not needed, recommended. That is why Microsoft came up with this kind of management insights, and that will give you an overview of the entire infrastructure, right? Uh, proactive maintenance is other stuff which we can look into, right? And here also a lot of interesting informations you can get. Boundary groups with no assignment, assign site, systems boundary group with no members <laughs> so why do we need boundary groups if there is no boundaries in it right so that is an overhead for the sscm infrastructure right okay so let's let's go back and see what is happening in our sscm lab new lab okay so so Connect to the server, SSM server, and click close on this and see what has happened here. SQL management studio, right? So I don't know whether it will, will get connected to the our SQL database or not. Anyways, we can try because this is the latest version and our SQL database is the previous one. Okay, so let's 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 open our cheat sheet and let's see what is happening here with with what is the next step, right? So we need to install ADK now, right? ADK and we need to install WinPE. Those steps we need to kind of install before we proceed further, right? So we have kind of completed all these things, right? SQL, SQL database, uh, SQL database setup. Yeah, that is completed, right? And you can see like this is the ADK installation which I mentioned in the post, right? So Karnan has a great post about the ADK installation and update how we can do that if you are if you are upgrading from the previous ADK to the newest ADK, right? So th those are the things which uh, which he already mentioned, uh, already explained in the post, right? So only these two are the components, main components which you need to select in the ADK. If you are if you are not using uh, the other stuffs like ICD and all the other stuff, right? So it is asking me to connect to the server. Let's try, and hopefully it will get connected. Otherwise, we are screwed, right? So yeah, it got connected, and uh, these are the default things available. We don't have any database, SCM database now, right? And if you go to the security, you would be able to see login and there should be name. My name should be there, username and the username. I should have system admin access. The installation account should have system admin access, right? If I'm not wrong. OK, so we need to ensure that before installing this SSCM. Otherwise, probably the SSCM installation might fail. And if you have a remote SQL server and all, you need to add um, the SSCM servers. Give me, a long, give me a sec. Let me launch the command prompt and let me launch the administration. OK, so computer management, MGMD, right? And if you are if you are using a SQL remote SQL server in the remote SQL server, you need to add SCM servers 
computer account into the local administration right so here in this in this scenario that is not required because we have sql and sscm on the same box but if you have a sql on the different box then you need to you need to add uh, your primary server right a, a computer account into the sql server local administrators right so that is what i mentioned in the blog post also right before that uh, we explained uh, last week we need to enable this computer otherwise you won't be able to find the computer objects right so that is not required for this scenario so let's close this and keep the admin one open and let me close this also sql because we have confirmed um, that is okay now firewall ports are very important for your environment production environment right if you are using production environment uh, we need to open up a lot of firewall ports between uh, each servers domain controllers and uh, each server sql servers and um, prime uh, sscm servers and all right okay so let's let's go ahead and install um, windows adk um, adk and winpe right so i'm going to install the latest version that is something to 20.04 i think so i i think i showed you how i uh, downloaded the adk and uh, winpe um in the in the last oh, where is it in the last episode right okay so you can go to that that you can go back and refer those things if you want to like those video and uh, in the video description i think i have provided the links also if not i will add those okay so i am going to install adk first right and it is to excuse me 2004 and this is the adk which i downloaded from microsoft this is all um we it this is all free right we don't need any um it says just cannot access the specific um uh, permission so the, i think something happened to this source folders right so i think my entire source folder is screwed up uh, <laughs> okay let me let me try to copy this to somewhere else right and check or i need to launch it from the administration admin admin portal uh, sorry admin command prompt okay let me try to copy this to the c drive no sorry f drive sources paste need administrator permissions okay okay fine <laughs> fine please move it come on that is taking too much of time 3 <laughs> minutes okay so i don't know what happened over there probably i will i will try to copy copy the source file right uh, because i did this source file download before joining the vm to the domain right so that was a local account and uh, probably that caused some issue there so i feel it is better to move the all the other stuff also into uh, into the new one new folder right so new drive so i'm going to copy the SCM source also, right? I think I forgot to download the pre uh, prerequisite files, right? Uh, let me copy that also into this folder F drive, right? So I uh, my recommendation is not to store the source files in the in the C drive, right? C drive should be standard, and uh, you, we should not have any. any application related uh, stuff source files in the c drive so i will let this copy 
and i just say it says seven minutes so i don't know how yeah yeah this is basically drive to drive copy in azure right so this is not the same same drive even though it's in the same region uh, in azure it is it is taking so much of time because uh, you know like uh, we selected um, the i think we selected premium ssd for for the sscm drive or i think i we selected the premium ssd and we selected the normal drive for the domain controller but even with the premium ssd probably it's going through the network that is why it is taking so much of time All right so it says 19 and yeah speed is not very impressive data movement okay so let's let's go back to our old lab and see what is what is that what is going on there All right management insights so i talked about management insights and um these are the these are the things which we need to as a ccm admin you need to kind of look into and understand what is what is there and how the how the things are there in your environment right is there any any way to improve it kind of stuff like that right Okay, so management insight does that basically, right? And you you will get a dashboard with all these details, right? That is pretty much interesting, right? Okay, so and you know the we we missed the part like discovery and everything, right? We are going to cover all these things in the coming days of our um our our training right sscm training so we don't worry if you don't know what is uh, active directory discovery how to set up that don't worry about that we will cover that in the future upcoming training series right so one thing i wanted to show is okay so uh, this this is another thing which we can do with the latest version of sscm right so that is basically um, collect the client logs, right? So if you if you go to if you go to the right click and uh, go to sorry select select a device, right? And you can see like there is an option like uh, client diagnostics, right, over here. And in the client diagnostics, you can select you can say like I need to collect the client logs of this particular device, right? And you can do it, right? So that there is a blog post about this also, right? In in the you can probably refer to that, get more details about it. But if you want to see the admin experience of that, I have already kind of did this for one of one of my server. Uh, sorry, one of my Windows 10 device. And if you want to see the log files, you can go to start, right? After collecting the logs, you can go to start and uh, resource explorer, right? There's something called new called diagnostics files, right? And you can see like diagnostic files. If you click on that and if you see, if you want to see the view, if you want to view the files, you can view it. And if you want to export it, save it, you can do that, right? If you can go to the properties and see like where it is stored, etc., etc., right? So those are the things which you can, which you can kind of look into, right? And um, and you can do like if you want to view the files, you can view it from here right that that will open up that temporary location where it is stored right so these these are the files uh, collected right so so where it is where it is copied it's there in the famous inbox right so file collection software inventory inbox this is the inbox where all the software inventory related files file collection files will get stored right so this is software inventory and this is the this is the file which we are talking about right so oh, i don't know how much how much time it will be stored here how, like how many days so that depends on the maintenance task also right uh, how what is the frequency of the maintenance task you set up um for for keeping the files right so 
so depending upon that uh, probably you it will get automatically deleted right so so that is the scenario this is the, this is the location i think i got a command recently on the blog post uh, where i uh, where i explain how to collect the file collection so i i did mention that it is related to uh, basically file collection is uses the same, similar logic like software inventory right in software inventory there is an option to collect the exe files and the license files there is a, if if we want to do that we can do that right in the software inventory but it's not recommended to do that because that is that is kind of putting lot of efforts or performance impact to the server uh, so so we don't recommend to do that but if there is a case scenario valid scenario business case to do that then that is that is what software inventory is used for right in ssem so this file collection a new thing is using software inventory but it's through the fast channel there's something fast channel called fast channel fast channel is like a kind of a immediate response from the server it won't wait for the next um, policy refresh and all right the client it it works on uh, based on uh, the 8 port 80 also so that's that's cool stuff right okay so let's go back and see what happened okay over here so this is our this is our ssem new ssem server and uh, we were copying it copying the files let's go back and install the adk now right hopefully it will allow me to install right so so let's try that okay so if you are installing from the internet uh, you need to i i think i explained this last last week also right so i am i'm not going to inst uh, explain it again so but if you if you want to download it uh, from internet and keep it somewhere um, and move it to some other server and install it on uh, that server if your server doesn't have uh, internet access then the below is the option to do that right below one is the option to do that so i i'm trying to install this in this f drive right so let's see if this is going to work or not and you can see the disk disk space required for this etc etc right over here and i'm going to say like no over here and accept right and over here as i mentioned i don't need all these things i don't need icd um, i don't know how many of you use icd um i don't know how many of you know what is icd there are some blog posts related to that uh, by vimal if i'm not wrong uh, how to use icd or i don't i don't remember exactly right who wrote that blog so i'm going to remove most of this stuff right and let me see okay so what are the two things i'm going to select one is deployment tools and the other one is usmt right usmt is required for osd components and all right so these are the two things i am going to select from adk right this is 2004 adk and the size it says 9 930 right and let's let's check the estimated uh, disk space it is going to uh, it is required for this right so let's click install and and the installation is going to finish soon i feel this is not going to take some time well, let's analyze this right what is happening from the disk perspective and performance perspective right cpu gem dab somewhere here it's 52 memory okay memory is fine network okay it's also fine okay so i think i'm going to close this and it says usmt launching startup guide i don't want that close now we need to install the winpe right so previously winpe was part of uh, adk now they kind of segregated it i don't know the reason uh, why they segregated it uh, 
uh, from from the ADK, uh, but WinPE is kind of another another installation now, right? So let's install WinPE. This is also like you can download the WinPE from uh, the Microsoft Doc uh, or Microsoft Downloads actually. So that's also shown in the, in the previous I think episode last week's episode. So I'm going to install and I'm going to say like uh, I don't I don't have to select anything because uh, it's related to the ADK. So it say automatically select the same drive, right? So I'm going to click next and I'm going to say no, right? And accept and this is only one thing, right? And th these are the things available then in t and we need 5.5 GB because it is going to create that uh, uh, all the all the WinPE related image and all right boot image and all the other funny fun stuff right it's going to use that okay so it is getting installed and I think this is also going to be very quick process if I'm not wrong it, it got stuck in 19 percentage okay so let's let's wait for this to complete let me drink some water okay <clears throat> so let's go back to the other sscm server and uh, console and check uh, we talked about the collection right so uh the collection uh, the log collection that is very very useful from my perspective right and somebody asked uh, an interesting post or interesting question or uh, posted an interesting comment in the blog post saying that oh why the hell we need um, <laughs> collection uh, collect, uh, this kind of a feature in sscm console we can directly uh, go to uh, the the v uh, sorry the desktop or the device right and we can copy it from there right okay so every organization is not same right every organization probably you might not have access uh, to collect the connect to the client device uh, from from your uh, from your um, server or from your device itself right because that is using again if you if you try to use smb 445 port that might be blocked be, be between the different vlans right so there are a lot of uh, useful scenarios this is very useful right this uh, log collection is very useful right so people might not understand all the scenarios um, every time right so so th all these all these features coming into sscm right because sscm team or microsoft team can see uh, what are the best or uh, used features or what are the most used features right uh, in SSCM console from the telemetry right so that is why they are concentrating on those kind of features right uh, so uh, obviously there will be a lot of admins who are trying to uh, face the logs using the different methods and that is why uh, this is kind of one of the one of the item they worked on and uh, produced or introduced in the uh, 2004 sorry 2004 or 2002 2002 version of sscm i think right okay so let's let's go close this and you know the difference between hardware inventory and software inventory right software inventory is not actually software inventory in sscm that is basically file collection and all the, the details right but the actual software inventory is part of hardware inventory hardware <laughs> in sscm that's that's a mystery mystery of a lot of folks right if you are getting all add remove programs entries and all the office 365 as you can see over here right you can see uh, office 365 configurations and all these things right this is under hardware inventory but uh, in the normal logic, it should come under software inventory, right? But it is in SSCM. This is all part of hardware inventory, right? So yeah, that is that is kind of a tip. Okay. 
and then you know the difference between user collection and device collection you cannot mix in earlier versions of sscm you would be able to mix user device you uh, user collection or collections with users and devices right uh, with i think they introduced this with sscm 2012 you cannot mix users with uh, devices in a particular collection you should have different collection for users and different collection for you devices right okay mm, that was it let me go back and see okay so we came back to our sscm lab and this is the this is the adk or winpe installation so now we have installed winpe now now we need to install some server components before we install the sscm server right so we are going to install the sscm server and the server components which are needed are something like remote um, i forgot the name remote dust no 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 remote differential uh, compression or something like that right so let's go back and see wsus yeah wsus we forgot <laughs> we need to install wsus right and then yeah this is the one right remote differential uh, components compression and bits so those things which we need to install before we install the actual sscm right so we need to install wsus if you are using wsus installation is required if we are using uh, if you are planning to use software updates or patching through sscm right otherwise it is not required but i think i don't remember whether it will give us warning or error or something like that i think it will give us warning if we don't install the wsus so wsus on um, 2019 server is pretty straightforward and it is very useful uh, when you when you use Windows 10 servicing and all right. Uh, if you use the previous uh, servers like 2012, server 2012 and all, then there are some dependencies like you need to uh, install some KBs on top of the WSUS version. Then only the Windows 10 servicing will start, or we can enable the Windows 10 servicing. So, so what I did over here is I uh, launched Server Manager and went to Roles, right? Add roles and uh, all roles and features, and click on the default things installation type. I'm going to install it on the server itself, right? I'm going to select this one, right? This is the WSUS one, the last option, right? That is Windows Server Update Services, right? I'm not going to select anything over here apart from this. This is the role which I'm going to select, right? If you have a if you have a remote WSUS server, if you are planning to install that, then also you need a WSUS uh, console installed on the primary server, right? So even though you are installing a WSUS server on the on the remote, um, what do you call, a remote server, then then also you need a WSUS console on the primary server, right? That was the requirement. Um, I feel. I don't know whether that got changed recently. We will find out, anyways. Uh, so, what what happened is when when I selected WSUS, it already kind of selected IAS because that is needed. That is mandatory for WSUS, right? Mandatory for WSUS. So we we need it got automatically selected, and all the other components which you have seen in the previous uh, section that auto got automatically selected right so you will see more uh, when we go to the features right on the next thing so this was this was already installed um, uh, before sql right so during this uh, before sql we installed 3.5 .net 3.5 we provided that um, alternate path and all right and bitlocker encryption i don't know why that is installed probably that is for the that is for the uh, azure server because this is in azure right R remote these things are automatically kind of selected i have not done anything internal databases selected i don't need that because we are going to 
uh, we are going to use the SQL for storing the database of WSUS over here. And anyways, I'm not going to dis uh, 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 remove that at the moment. Right. And I'm not going to select bits now. Right. I will select that later. Right. As part of bits and remote differential compression somewhere here. This is the one which we need to select. Right. Either we can select it now or we can select it later. Right. So I'm not going to mix WSU setup with um, remote differential co compression and bits. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead with only with the WSU now and it will ask me uh, which is the which is the connection which you need uh, the wid is windows internal database right so we normally use wid if we use uh, if you are installing uh, sup uh, or uh, sup on a remote uh, remote sup right if you are using a remote sup then uh, we might need to use uh, WID, right? So that is that is where we we don't have any SQL database. So, so if there is an internal. This is WID is internal database, Windows internal database. If you don't use SQL Express or SQL, the actual full SQL, then you can use WID, right? So I'm not going to use that now because I'm going to I'm going to use the SQL, which is installed on this device, right? So the recommendation is to use the SQL um, if you have that for the for the tier one kind of a server, right? So so that is what I'm going to use. See, see next, right? And now I need to provide a path for storing the updates, right? So I'm going to create a folder here somewhere in my F drive. OK, this is C drive. Let's close this and let's launch the F drive piece. And I'm going to say. WSUS. I'm going to select this as the path, right? So you can give some fancy name if you want uh, but i'm going to go with the default one right as per your standard like uh, the naming standards within your organization probably you can provide the appropriate name right okay so db instance um it it is if it's if it's remote uh, sql if you are trying to install this before installing the sql then probably you might get into trouble but i think we have already installed it and uh, probably uh, you can test the connectivity uh, from here, right? You can say, okay, it's successfully connected. It is connected to the SQL server. It is able to connect. Then you don't need to provide anything. Otherwise, you need to provide the SQL, remote SQL server name and instance name, right? SQL instance name to connect. And you should have appropriate access on the server, right? And um, the your server the the w, wsu server uh, should be part of the local administrators of that sql server also if i'm not wrong um, could be wrong probably it's better to uh, refer the documentation right for the remote server scenarios right so i'm going to click next because it says successfully connected the server so there is no connectivity issue it is not it is able to connect to the sql server with proper permission for us it's easy because it's on the same server right but in the in the production environment, I normally get a lot of issues over here in this step, right? Because there could be some connectivity issues, there could be some firewalls in between, and there could be some um, uh, policies in between that could cause issues. Okay, so and probably there could be some permission issues that could cause issues. Probably you might not have the SQL access, uh, SQL uh, what you call. Uh, admin access on the SQL box and probably you might not have uh, access on the database, right? Uh, system sysadmin access on the database. Then also um, 
it is it is not going to happen right so basically what it is going to do is now is basically it is going to create a database for wsus in sql right so we have seen there is no database at the moment in the sql when we launched the sql management studio now after this you would be able to see the our w sus db uh, right the database got created after this right so click on next and uh, the is role that is normal right i am not going to change anything over here now the services right these are the default ones which is which is part of the ias and configurations wsus configuration which automatically got selected so i'm not going to uh, uh, remove anything or i'm not going to add anything over here right we will see like what we need uh, for the sscm afterwards this is only for the wsus right okay so next and it will see you uh, give you the summary what are the things selected now let's confirm and install it right so this is i don't know how much time it is going to take uh, so probably we will we will we will see uh, for a few seconds and we will head over to the let me drink some water head over to the <clears throat> the see uh, the the other lab and see what uh, what we can sh what we can see over there right while we wait for the installation okay so <clears throat> so this is this is the collections i talked about the user collection and device collections this is the uh, old lab environment so uh, there are default collections as well as there are uh, custom collections right so i have only one collection in this lab that is custom collection and all the other collections are default collections when i say default collections these collections are automatically created when you install an sscm server all right so you don't need to create all these collections um, like all desktops and server collection all mobile devices collection so if you see uh, collection id you would be able to come to know about this right that is the trick over here if it's a default collection always the collection id will be sms something right so that is the that is why it, that is that that is the way we can easily identify the default collections and the custom collections and custom collections it all starts with your site code right sscm site code is mem in this right okay if you are not sure what a site code you will come to that in the sscm installation part right and um, yeah that is that is the <clears throat> that is the what do you call the default difference between the default collection and the custom collection so so i ha i only have one custom collection right and all the other default collections apart from all system collection are limited to all system collections right so probably you won't be able to change anything on the uh, default collections right so if you go over here right you cannot change the limiting collection you cannot change uh, the type membership membership rules you cannot change you don't have access to do that right uh schedule uh, probably you are not it's it's better to touch the configuration of the default collections right okay so let's let's go back and see okay okay so this is our this is our oh, new sscm lab server and we we did install this wsus and it says configuration required installation succeeded on ding 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 on, <laughs> on this particular server right so these are the things installed configuration required we know the configuration required for the wsus that that is okay because uh, we know like we need to configure the uh, the the post installation stuff and uh, we are not going to do that uh, because that is not required at the moment right we just leave it as it is right and we we 
we don't need to do that now as you know right that sup configuration and everything will take care of that right okay so now what is the next piece right we need to install uh, bits and we need to install rd rdc right the remote differential compression before we install the sscm actual sscm application right so that is uh, what we are going to do that before that i just need to confirm uh, that is it or not uh, whether i'm missing something right so these are the two two things mentioned over here right and we have a blog post over here to check uh, what is uh, what are the what are the best practices to do that and uh, if you are not sure how to do it right so more details related prerequisites yeah just so site system prerequisite i think we had gone through this documentation last week where you will see like oh we need uh, .NET framework 3.5 sql yeah we did that in the morning right and we did all the things right adk we did uh, we need uh, visual visual c++ distribution native client uh, all those things right all those fun stuff we have already gone through i think we are okay uh, the only thing missing i think in this is probably it is already explained in Rajul's post related to the SQL because after the installing the SQL, we need to uh, we need to kind of configure the memory and all the other stuff, right? Otherwise, it will give you a warning. But for the lab configuration, I am not uh, very uh, very much interested to do that now. Otherwise, in the production, uh, it is very much recommended to do uh, the 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 memory configuration for sql this is this is particularly important if you are uh, hosting sql and sscm on a same box right if you are using a sql on a different box remote box then i don't worry much about that but uh, if if you are installing it in an on a sscm so sscm box itself then you need to configure that c c s sql memory configurations like my, what is the maximum amount of memory we can uh, it can use for the sql sql application etc right otherwise it is going to kill the performance of the sscm right okay so now we are going to install remote differential and differential compression i might need to edit this um, compression and bits for sql uh, so let's let's go back to our friend server manager and add role and uh, next right and see the same things which we are going to go through again i yes i don't need to add any new roles here roles here right let's go to this and see like bits right okay bits i'm going to install bits when i clicked on bits all these our dependencies of bits or prerequisites of bits so i need to add all those things right i add all those features and it will come as automatic right and then i need to select this one remote differential compression this is one of the piece which we don't uh, we don't want to miss right if if we miss then probably uh, we might need to come back and fix this before we can install the SSCM server, right? So otherwise the SSCM prerequisite check will fail, right? And as part of this components, these are the components getting installed, right? And I'm searching for remote differential. Okay, this is over here, right? Let's click next and let's install it, right? Okay. Now the next step is after this, probably I will give a restart and excuse me. Okay, I will give a restart and after that um, I can I can start the installation of the SSEM server itself, right? So that is what we are going to do now. Okay, let's wait for two minutes okay it's going fast now 50 percentage completed that's interesting right it shows the percentage completed over here if you go hover over here right at 
that is say that says 62 that's interesting i never noticed this before probably this was there before also but i never noticed it okay so let's let's go back to the the previous lab or lab, old lab environment and go through i don't know how many of you know um, orchestration right orchestration group i think um, deepak is trying to trying to explain this uh, about the server groups and orchestration groups uh, in uh, through a blog post later some sometime later in the future uh, so yeah this is for server patching right if you want to do server patching uh, probably this would be helpful for you uh, this is also a preview um, or pre-release version basically of SSEM. so there are a lot of interesting configurations or features coming into this right so you can if you don't know what is this you can configure the uh, pre-script and post-script uh, so we can run the pre-script before installing this updates and post -script, uh, script after installing the updates to confirm whether every functionality all the functionality of the server is correct or not and um, you can you can have a lot more control in the server patching scenarios with orchestration groups right okay so that is it from that, let me go back and see what happened. Okay, so the installation succeeded on this server. Now we can close. We have installed bits and uh, RDC. Now let's 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 go ahead and install the SSCM now, right? So let's see whether it is going to get. going to be successful or not uh, we'll see this is the source files which i downloaded from the eval sender right microsoft eval sender and this is the base lane version i think i'm i don't know this is why why i put 2004 right anyways okay um, so i always get confused between uh, the windows 10 version and sscm version right <laughs> so it should be 2002 okay so this is 2002 version of sscm base lane version so if you want to install the new sscm infrastructure always use the latest version of sscm all right you can download it from eval center and you can put in the key uh, if you have a production key right so if you put in the key it will automatically convert your eval version to the um, to the actual production version right but you don't you don't don't install <laughs> the technical preview version into your production right i have seen some seen seen some horror stories about that uh, public like some of the folks or uh, I mistakenly installed, downloaded the technical preview version of SSEM configuration manager and installed it on a production server, right? So that should not happen. So this is the production version, uh, te not technical preview, 2002 version of SSEM. And I clicked on splash and trying to install this, right? This is the, this is the setup gui and you can see over here it is not sscm anymore this is microsoft endpoint configuration manager right that is mecm mecm okay okay so install and yes it needs some access so this is basically it says okay i need this a sql i need fqdn okay fine fine everything is everything is okay release release notes you can see the release notes and check uh, everything is okay you you have gone through it um, all the prerequisites are in place kind of stuff like that right and next next over here this is, is a, this is an interesting option right if you want to install a cas server i don't recommend to use cas server ever if you like only criteria to use CAS server is uh, you have more than 
more than uh, more number of clients than a single standalone primary server can support for example 1.5 um uh, 150k clients right 1 1.5 lakhs uh, in indian indian numbers but uh, if 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 you are in in a global perspective if you are more than uh, 150k clients probably you might need um, a cas but otherwise i don't think there is a requirement of cas at all probably that number is changed now uh, probably one single primary server can support more than 150k client i don't know um, the you can look into the microsoft documentation and uh, confirm that before installing it but my recommendation is to go with the standalone primary server right so that will make your admin life very easy rather than uh, struggling with the sql replication sql based replication between the primary servers and the cas etc etc right so i'm going to select install the primary server over here and i'm not going to select anything uh, like default i'm going to go through and select it manually right if you want you can select use this option uh, to select everything as default options right it will be easy uh, but i'm not going to do that i'm going to say install click on that and uh, click next right and as you can see uh, you have options like uh, upgrade right and recover reset right uninstall all those options are here also right in the same setup file right and i'm going to eval i don't have a product key so i'm going to do an eval and that is eval is for 180 days right so 180 days this lab will be running up and running right so i'm going to click next and accept all right accept and next if this is this is the prerequisite files right which we need to kind of download uh, there are two ways mm, you can download it offline if you want uh, if you don't have a, a internet connection on the server sscm server where you are installing but in most cases we need to have a internet connection to get the updates and all right so in this case i am going to inst uh, download it directly during the, this 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 um this process right so i'm going to download it to my cf drive and sources and inside inside no probably i will say a new i will create a new folder mem mcm prereq mcm 202 okay and i'm going to create a new folder called pre prereq files right prereq files okay so this is to download the prerequisite files right so without this you cannot proceed right so you need to either download it or you can you can download it uh, in a different server uh, by running a setup.dl file from the source location right and uh, you can go through it and i think i have a blog post about that also probably you can go through it how to download it offline right the prerequisite files but in this scenario i'm going to download it onto the server directly onto this folder right so if you want to see that probably you can check out this right and still download around i don't know uh, 18 plus files right it is going to get downloaded over here in this folder right configuration manifest and the server chs cht if you ask me what are these files i don't know i have no clue right so this is 48 files right so 48 free requisite files these are da getting downloaded directly from the microsoft internet right so microsoft um, update server so right where where the uh, the 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 latest version of sscm or configuration manager source files and uh, prerequisites are stored so this is where from where from that particular server it is getting downloaded to uh, your sscm server okay 
so some of these are going to take some time uh, some uh, i have noticed a sql sql client um, the download is going to take some time apart from that everything is kind of quick uh, so only the sql thing is going to take some time over here in this in this part right so let let it get downloaded and uh, we will come back to this uh, soon okay it's going so fast so i don't want to i think i don't want to go back to the other server to show you something rather than looking at this <laughs> i don't know what happened to sequel SQL is down. Oh, this is basically this is ah uh, this is Azure Server, right? Ah, uh, in Azure everything is fast. Internet related and Microsoft download related stuff. I downloaded the ISO file for the uh, server 2019, right? To install that .NET uh, within uh, probably two minutes, right? It didn't take more than two minutes to download four gigabytes of uh, ISO file. Right? Same with same with uh, SQL and SCM also, right? Configuration manager uh, file. So download is pretty quick over here in this and it's stuck somewhere. Okay, it says verifying the download. Okay, let, let it verify. I'm not in a hurry. So let's check what is the size of this, right? And it says 1.1 GB, right? 1.1 GB got downloaded like probably within a minute right so it's it's checking uh, the the configuration so let me go to tools right and copy the cm trace to my desktop because this is kind of needed and need tool to have to check the log files and i'm going to say Yes, always, always, if you want to have a CM trace, copy of the CM trace, it is always there in the setup folder, right? Under tools, uh, you can go to tools and you can use the CM trace, right? And uh, let's close this, this, this default. This is the language selection, right? So language selection, if you want to install Chinese language, you want to install those other languages, you can use that over here. Nothing is installed, only the English is installed. Now I'm going to go with the default one, but if you want uh, the other languages, this is the this is where you can select the server language selection, right? And the client language selection is coming up in the next page, if I'm not wrong. Right, so this is the client language selection, right? This is also like English is selected. If you have different language clients, probably it's worth uh, doing that. Um, but I don't rec I don't use this in production also, right? Um, it, it, I use English one, all right? So click next. And this is where we need to provide the site code. In the, in the last uh, the demo of, the previous lab i have shown you that there's some difference between default collection and the custom collection right so where i mentioned custom collection starts with uh, site code custom collection id starts with site code so this is the site code this is the unique identifier for a particular SCM or configuration manager site in your hierarchy, right? So this should be unique. Uh, we cannot uh, use the same site code for uh, like uh, different SCM sites, right? If you have CAS and um, primaries, you cannot put the same site code for the CAS and primaries. So, and there are some restrictions which are well documented in Microsoft. Uh, so some site codes are not allowed, right? Some particular combination of uh, site codes are not allowed, all right? So this would be three uh, three letter, right? Three, three letter, something like that, right? I am going to say, I don't know, HT, HTM, 
probably i'm going to say stm as my site code right if i put one try to put one more no it won't allow me to so this is three letter and if you want you can put one letter also st1 you can say st1 right so you can do that i always prefer to have two letters and i'm sorry two uh I don't know alphabets and one letter, right? That is safe. Otherwise, you need to you can go through the documentation, Microsoft documentation, and uh, use the recommended. Don't use the uh, the restricted site codes combination, right? So the, if you use that, probably that might create some problems um, because that that codes are used somewhere in the SCM source code somewhere, right? That is why there is a restriction, right? Okay. Anyways, so that the other thing is site name, right? Site name is something uh, which which is to identify your site. Uh, so I'm going to say how to manage devices, how to manage devices, uh, community, community primary server. All right so this is some some normal english uh we from like uh, the, the perfect example is over here right contaso headquarters site code right if you have a headquarters in mumbai bangalore or somewhere in paris or somewhere in new york then probably you can say like okay this is um, how to manage devices headquarters in paris right so yeah, that is that is, that is it. Basically, for the identification, easy identification of the primary site, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, right. Now, the installation folder. This should be changed. This should be F drive because we are installing. It's not recommended to install anything on the C drive. Um, even if you are using in lab, it's okay. But uh, I don't recommend to do that in lab also. But um, yeah, you in production, no big no to C drive installation of SCM. Right. You should not install uh, C drive. Sorry, install install SCM in C drive. It should be some other drive where you have more space, and um, uh, all the inbox files will be stored in this particular drive. So you should have enough uh, space, right? Okay, install. This is going to be default, right? I'm going to check. Go ahead with that. I didn't restart the server, right? So that could be a problem. Let's see, right? So I'm going to see this option. This is a standalone uh, SCM primary server. I'm not going to install a CAS and then I'm not going to attach the existing primary servers to the CAS. So this is for that. If you have an existing primary server and if you want to extend that primary server to a CAS, that then this this we need to build a new CAS and attach the SCM primary server to that one, right? So that is not the thing i'm going to do and i don't recommend to do that um, so this is the primary server standalone primary server installation which we are going to through going through selected to standalone primary server that is fine do you want to continue okay uh, it says yeah we can install the prime the cas server later if you want right so i'm going to this is sql right so this is sql information uh many many folks get stuck over here because if you have a if you don't have a proper connectivity and proper communication between the sql server and the primary server then you are going to uh, if you are using a remote prime uh, sql server right then you are going to fail over here and uh, the, the connectivity should be there and the op ports should be open, the appropriate firewall ports should be open and you should have appropriate access system admin, system admin and sys admin, uh, sys admin and system, ad uh, system administrator access on the remote SQL server, right? And then only this this you can pass through this stage, right? And you need to put in enter the FQDN of the SQL Server, right? And you need to if you are using a different instance from uh, instead of the default instance, you need to enter over here, right? Otherwise, it's not going to uh, pass through. It's not allow. It won't allow you to pass through this step, right? 
okay i'm going to say next and in this case um, i'm going to use the same server as sql and sscm so i don't face any issue because that is the best installation easy installation um, so this is the default one i'm not going to change it this is data files right so you know more about data files you can see uh, the rajul uh, rajul's blog uh, he explained it very well uh, what what needs to be done over there so this is the default sms provider right this is the sms provider is basically providing the connectivity between your sscm application and the sql right sql database so that is why we need a uh, sms provider so you might have uh, probably more than one sms provider in some of the production environments right and this is this is the another important stuff people might forget and click next on this this is https communication right if you see if you see the default configuration it is asking us to uh, enable https configuration between all the server components and client components everything right so then that means by default you should have a pki infrastructure in place right pki infrastructure in place and you should have uh, the client certificate and server certificates on on your on all your clients right and you need to manage all those certificates right so that is uh, that is not very easy task that is a pki uh, like before this setting up this you need to ins uh, install the pki infrastructure and you need to set up that right so in normal scenarios i normally use the uh, the http normal communication right and i'm going to go ahead with that communication method right so the default is https i'm not going to use that i'm going to use the http one that is that is okay for for us now right and this is the another important thing right uh, so i'm not going to install mp and dp at the moment during the installation because i can install it later also if i want right so that is what i'm going to you do the now right i'm not going to install mp or um, dp now okay so this is this is the telemetry delay related stuff right i'm going to check with the next um, and yeah this is the service connection point right so this is the service connection point this is the connection point which provides us the um, connectivity to uh, to the to the uh, configuration manager source files and it is it helps us to send the sscm telemetry to microsoft once the telemetry is sent uh, microsoft will allow us to download the latest version of sscm into the console right you can see the 2002 version in the console you can see the 19 1910 version in the console itself you don't have to go to another download page and download it manually right and you don't have that option in sscm current branch or configuration manager current branch so this is where uh, we are saying like okay this is going to be uh, our service connection point and this is going to be online right and um, this is going to be online right and um, uh, you can use the proxy authentication if you want over here uh, in this server we don't need to use proxy uh, probably in many organizations you might need to use the proxy server and you might need to use the proxy uh, port right 8080 or something like that right but in this case this is straightforward um, for us in the lab i am going to click next and now the prerequisite starts right and let's this prerequisites is going to take a lot of time depending on the depending on the scenarios which we are going to go through right and we will see the prerequisites and all the other installation things tomorrow because it's almost time now three uh 3:30, right and it's it's already uh prerequisites is just pretty quick right probably we can we can go through the inst start the installation and stop for now uh, so because these are all warnings right so 
as i mentioned this is one issue probably the, which we have already provided the information to publish um, the content into active directory last week um, i have shown you that um, added a, a active directory group into system management container right and provided the full access even though it shows it sees there is a issue with publishing because it might not have access or something it just says okay that's fine security mode uh, we have not changed the authentication mode right this is the recommendation from microsoft you it, the recommendation is to change that and the sql memory usage which i mentioned uh, we need to limit the memory usage that is the recommendation and the process process memory allocation that is also the same right so so these are the things which you need to take care of in the production environment if you are having issues but if you want you can do it later also right we can do it later also because it is not blocking us right and in normal scenarios like if we if, if we miss bits or if we miss a uh, remote differential compression it is going to give us error right and you won't this button begin install button might not get enabled right in this case we already covered all those components prerequisites sql uh, w source everything everything right bits everything we covered adk winpe everything we covered that is why it is kind of a uh, straightforward and it says like begin installation normally in my, i have seen like many cases i i forgot to do something right uh, enable some con prerequisite and i failed over here then i need to go back and install it and restart the server then i need to go through the entire process again right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to start the installation right begin the installation and uh, let's see tomorrow what does the status of it and how much time it is going to take to get installed right so what i'm going to normally do is during the installation right i open up this log right and i will do the side by side analysis of what is what is going through right so what is what is the background task it is happening over here right and you can say it is checking the hash file values and then it will install the sql so before before we finish today i forgot to show you that wsus db installation or uh, database creation right so that is created um let me show you that um this is going to take some time probably it is eating eating up all the resources of my server uh, it's 72 so while show while we show that is there any questions for today before we finish hi anu yeah just a quick question and mm -hmm. this this is good stuff basically we learning how and the why just question about the uh, might be outside of this in term if you have a dp uh, distribution point and uh, within a same site server and you want to migrate in a scenario where you want to move the dp from hyper v cluster to vmware cluster what's the recommendation there uh, I, i think i think there is a tool from microsoft right uh, content transfer tool or something uh, i i never used it but i know there is a tool to transfer the uh, content library from from one system to another system but i don't know whether that will transfer the entire dp role or not uh, but um, so you just need to uh, you need to move the entire dp role to the new server you mean to say or it's only yeah. the storage the whole basically db server and you need to move it basically the commission the existing cluster and move it to new vmer cluster so what i was thinking what's the recommendation there is it best to rebuild the uh, dp and reinstall everything or can we use like uh, yeah tools to migrate the server from a vhd to uh vhd uh, like uh, vmdk kind of thing converter or something like that is that supported or what's the best practice 
to be to be honest i have never gone through that kind of a scenario uh, so uh, if you ask microsoft right they will say like uh, the, the any other scenario is not supported uh, the the best way is to use the default tools available if it's just a content transfer probably that con library my uh, content library migration tool we can use otherwise if it's if it's a entire dp role migration then it's it is better to uh, build a new dp on that on that rem new server remote server and uh, then then use uh, the normal distribution or pre staging or something similar to that to uh, to do the migration so that is the microsoft recommended way but <laughs> but in the industry i have seen like many scenarios where um, where we use some other easy method and it might work right uh, so so when when microsoft say it is not supported it doesn't mean that uh, it uh, it won't work right it might work right. right but microsoft has not has not done like x number of tests uh, to confirm that the scenario is supported for the product right so that that is why like they say like microsoft is not supported so but i don't sorry i don't have a direct answer to your question probably somebody else from uh, from this team might have a better experience than me on yes, this scenario yeah deepak go ahead yes, yes. so uh, see, you already gave the uh, option which is there with microsoft on uh, white paper uh, that is a content transfer manager tool uh, to uh, uh, transfer the content library itself from one dp to another uh, if you if you remember we we use shared distribution point uh, in past when we were uh, cutting off from uh, uh, yeah. 2007 to 2012 yeah so yeah so that that uh, that might be the another uh, option to uh, deal with this but uh, but creating a new dp and uh, uh, transferring everything uh, distributing the content everything to the new dp is uh, what is the uh, the best practice we uh, we um, uh, we utilize because uh, that way you get a, a healthy d uh, healthy d uh, distribution point uh, you uh, get rid of all your junks actually okay great stuff thanks thanks for for the feedback thank you you're welcome sir thank you deepak okay so any other question so uh, before before another question right so uh, what what i can see is uh, there's no sus sus database yet created probably we need to that go through that configuration then only i don't know i forgot where it is exactly right but you can see uh, cm underscore hti um, sorry st1 database that is for the sscm sscm1 right so we we already kind of setting up the sql server database so uh, it started working on that so yeah just wanted to update yeah so uh, so the one question from uh, one question from my end sir uh, in 2011 you uh, published a blog for sscm hardware specification for uh, central primary and sql Mm -hmm. uh, so can we can we uh, still use that? Uh, I just pinged in the chat uh, uh, you know, the blog which was written by you in 2011 um, because uh, I, I think after 2011 so many things got changed and we might need to <laughs> increase the yeah the yeah I, I think I think that is that might not be relevant one for yeah. now uh, so uh, there is a white. A white paper and ebook available for that i think uh, and even even in the documentation right last week i have shown all the hardware details are very specifically mentioned in the prerequisites right mm -hmm. in the microsoft documentation and also like we have released a ebook uh, blog post right in the ebook blog post there is a there is a ebook or um, uh, yeah i think it's it's a pdf file um, it 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 shows all the all the welcome to hardware specifications yes sir correct yeah all the all the best practices 